if you want to typeset a table, there is a very similar environment available to the array environment that we've just seen in math mode, but the tabular environment is used outside math mode. So you write begin tabular, end tabular, and then the columns are again separated by an ampersand and the lines are terminated by a backslash. And there is a mandatory argument to the tabular environment in curly braces where you specify for each column, whether it's left aligned, right aligned, or centered. But the tabular environment has a couple of more capabilities. In particular, you can separate rows and columns with lines. If you want to separate two rows with a line, you put a vertical bar uh, between the specification of the alignment. And if you want to separate rows with a horizontal line, you write backslash H line after the end of that row. In this example here, <clears throat> I've also used a sort of typewriter stylized XOR word to denote that this is maybe the XOR operator from some programming language. But if we use this more often, then uh, writing XOR and switching into typewriter mode and also declaring that this is a operator such that in math mode automatically some appropriate spacing is applied to the left or the right is quite long. So I've shown here also how you can yourself define a new macro, namely using new command and then the name of the macro and then the definition. And you can also have here as an optional argument the, the number of arguments that this macro accepts and then you use number sign one, number sign two, number sign three as the local variables inside this macro definition in order to expand the argument in the body of the macro. How do you include graphics, photographs, uh, similar depictions in LaTeX? The original uh, Tech engine didn't actually support any uh, graphics, the DVI file format was only able to tell the printer where on the page do you put which character and the only graphical primitive it has is filled rectangles uh, for things like drawing uh, the horizontal or vertical lines uh, in tables. <clears throat> However, the uh, many of the printer drivers then came up with extensions and uh, Tech has a built-in special instruction that allows the, you to use these graphical extensions of uh, the printer drivers. And in particular, the DVI to PS and the PDF Tech commands have special commands that allow the inclusion of either PostScript or PDF graphics files in order to um, get an image into a document. And in LaTeX, uh, the way PostScript or PDF files are included is in PostScript, you produce a so-called embedded PostScript file. That's basically a PostScript program that lacks at the end of the program the command to uh, ship out the page to start printing the page. Um, so it's a PostScript file that's meant to be included in into other PostScript files. In PDF, there is no distinction between a PDF and a embedded PDF file. You just use a normal PDF and you make the page size small enough such that the margin is just tight around the figure. So you, if you don't print something onto an A4 sheet, but on uh, you specify the page size just to enclose the figure, then you have something that you can conveniently include in LaTeX. And you do this by including the graphics um, package. There was an older graphics package written with an S at the end, and then there was an extension where they replaced the S with the X, and that's the more commonly used one today. And once you have included that, you can just write include graphics, and then in parentheses, the file name. And in, if you use the 
original tag, you can only include postcode files. If you use PDF tag or PDF LaTeX, you can include a PDF vector graphics file, JPEG for photos and PNG file for lossless compressed uh, bitmap files. <clears throat> Very important, the JPEG file format is really only intended for photographs that you have taken with a, a camera. It is not meant for, for computer-generated imagery such as line drawings or um, screenshots or similar because JPEG actually applies a variant of the Fourier transform onto the image and if it finds very sharp lines that adds some noise around these sharp lines which may not be immediately obvious on the screen but when they come um, out of a laser printer they become quite noticeable. So make a distinction between real photographs, the P in JPEG stands for photograph, joint photographic expert group, and PNG files for anything computer generated. Um, Postscript and PDF have the ability not just to draw lines and circles and um, Bezier splines and similar things. They also have the ability to apply geometric transforms to the uh, graphics drawn by a sequence of these uh, graphic primitive commands. And this applying of coordinate transforms is also available via the graphics image. So you can, for example, take some arbitrary uh, LaTeX text, some paragraphs or graphics that you have included, and then you put a scale box command around it to shrink it to, for example, here 80% of its size. The include graphics command also has a built-in optional argument for rescaling graphics. So <coughs> you can, for example, say, uh, I want the height of the figure to be 60 millimeters, or you can say that the width of this photograph that we're including here should be 90% of the current length of a line in, in a paragraph. So the reference to line width, for example, allows you to automatically scale a, a photograph such that it matches the line length nicely, even if the line length is reduced, for example, because you're including a photograph in the middle of an uh, itemized environment. And you can use arbitrary text and resize it to um, arbitrary dimensions. Um, if you specify only one of the two dimensions, then you can leave an exclamation mark in the other dimension and that will scale accordingly while preserving the aspect ratio of this box here. Um, there's also a uh, text color command that allows you to change the color if you want to have more colorful uh, indications. Uh, usually this is more commonly done with uh, presentation slides rather than uh, printed text, but you just write text color and then specify a color and the text. And there's also a define color command where uh, in different color schemes, red, green, blue, or sun, magenta, yellow, black, uh, you can specify what color you want to have. <clears throat> One problem with including tables and um, photographs, diagrams, and so on is that they interfere with the page breaks. What happens if the photograph or table that you've included uh, ends up in your report starting near the end of the page. It would look quite ugly if uh, LaTeX would automatically insert a lot of white space at the end of the page, which could be filled with other uh, text from your document. So the solution is to allow the uh, larger images that you include to float around your text such that LaTeX can automatically decide where exactly in the text to place the figure. And these floating figures are implemented using the figure environment. So if you have a large 
something large that you want to show, you put it between begin figure and end figure. You include your photograph, for example. You put a caption underneath such that no matter where exactly in the text it shows up, there's an explanation of what that is. And these figures will automatically be numbered. And in order to refer to the figure, you also specify a label. And then in the text, you refer to your figure like see also figure and then the name of the figure. Um, I've used here a tilde and no break space such that this number that gets inserted here is not ending up on the next line. And you can use the ref command that we've seen before to refer to the number of the figure or you can also use page ref in order to refer to the page number on which this figure appears. <clears throat> and as I mentioned, this label command can not only be used in enumerate environments and in figures, but also after section, subsection uh, commands. It can also be used uh, after a begin equation or end equation environment. That is a variant of the display uh, math mode that automatically uh, puts at the end of every equation an equation number. And if you have uh, defined a label there, then you can refer to equations by number or by page reference. <clears throat> um, Tech was designed originally in the 1970s when RAM was a little bit expensive and as a result uh, Tech is very thrifty when it comes to um, using RAM. It actually keeps only the current page it's building and the current paragraph it's formatting in memory. And at the end of the page, it forgets all the text that it has processed uh, so far uh, and just carries on some state variables that you have defined and so on. Um, <clears throat> as a result, uh, very different from, for example, modern web browsers, which can keep very large documents in RAM all the time. Um, these, in order to get these label references right, uh, Tech can't really search through the entire document on its own um, because the, it never keeps the entire document in memory. So what LaTeX does is each time it encounters a label reference, it writes out into a so-called auxiliary file, document name .aux, um, the name of the label, the number associated with the label, and the page number associated with the label. And the next time LaTeX reads in this auxiliary file and now can build up an internal table of all label labels that have been defined and can refer to them. As a result of that, in order to get these labels right, you need to run LaTeX twice. And LaTeX will find out whether the uh, labels that it, the auxiliary file that it has read at the start of the document is still the same as the one that it uh, writes out at the end of the document. And if there is any difference, then it will warn you. Uh, it will say rerun to get cross references right. So a very common mistake is that uh, someone submits a dissertation and all the references in the dissertation actually show up as two bold question marks. And these two bold question marks just mean LaTeX couldn't actually uh, find the reference and the person who called LaTeX hasn't run the, hasn't read the warning messages uh, carefully and forgot to do this second run to get the cross references right. What I do to avoid this is I don't call PDF LaTeX myself. I apply what we learned in the Unix tools course. I use a make file in order to build my PDF files using PDF LaTeX. And I have a rule in the make file that teaches the make file how do I convert a something.tech into a something.pdf file and the rule first calls pdf latech once. Then it calls the grep command to check in the log file that 
tech always outputs for any job, um, whether the log file contains the string rerun to get something right. For as long as the log file contains that string, it calls LaTeX, PDF LaTeX again. And this way, I'm always sure that all my references have been uh, resolved. Um, there's another alternative. Um, if you don't want to use make files, I usually use make files because I also build other things like um, figures, table data that goes into documents. Um, but if you don't want to do this, there's also a LaTeX MK tool, which is kind of a specialized uh, make tool um, that doesn't require such a configuration file. And it automatically determines various dependencies from uh, for example, it can figure out what files LaTeX read uh, when it uh, processed the document last time, and then it recompiles a LaTeX document wherever the file modification timestamps indicate that the document is out of date. Uh, what graphics editor can you use in order to um, produce figures that go into uh, LaTeX documents. Um, in principle, you could use anything that uh, produces either EPS or PDF files, but there are a couple of graphics editors available, drawing programs available that are specifically designed to be used with LaTeX. And one of them that I use quite frequently is called XFIG. And uh, the reason I like it is not only because it's pretty old and has been around for a long time, but also the file format is a simple plain text format. So occasionally if I have to make a larger change, like I decided at the end of my PhD thesis that I want to change some terminology or some variable names throughout all my uh, many dozen uh, drawings, then I just use uh, a set script or use Emacs to edit the uh, the fig files directly that describe my graphics and some many other tools don't have a, such an easy to edit file format. Um, but one particular attraction of XFIG is also that it can produce figures where it uses LaTeX in order to fill in all the text. This way, um, you use the drawing program to draw the lines and spline curves and circles and arrows, uh, the graphical elements, but all the text you type in uh, into the drawing program using LaTeX notation. So you can use in the text labels of your drawing, math mode, macro, symbols, references, font changes, it will automatically be typeset in fonts that mat match exactly how uh, LaTeX typesets the surrounding text. How does that work? What you do is you can ask XFIG to export not just a PDF file, but to produce a pair of PDF file. You get a so-called PDF tech file out and you get an additional PDF tech underscore T file out. And the PDF tech underscore T file is a LaTeX file. And the PDF tech file is the document in PDF, is the, the figure that you've drawn in PDF, but it lacks all the text. And what the underscore T file does is it's a piece of LaTeX that first contains an include graphics command to load the first, the PDF file with all the lines and arrows and so on. And then it uses LaTeX commands in order to put the text on top of the uh, of this drawing. So LaTeX is actually used to fill in the text, and that's why you can use the same fonts, math mode. You can have bibliographic references in the middle of a figure, and they will for, uh, work out correctly. So if, if you want to uh, use this, you can export these two files manually. But again, if you've come to Unix tools, I hope you have learned that you should never do anything manually that you may have to repeat later. So it's better to write a make file and the exporting uh, of a 
dot uh, fig file as you have edited with xfig into a, a PDF or postscript or PDF tag or PS tag file. Uh, there's an add-on command line uh, version of fig to def. This is just the output driver of the xfig command on its own and you can use that in a make file in order to automatically satisfy these dependencies. There are lots of other tools uh, that you might use for LaTeX documents. There exists a very comprehensive um, package called uh, Tix, uh, which comes with its own uh, many hundred uh, page long uh, manual. It's an entire graphics programming language, very sophisticated, but also a steep learning curve. You will uh, probably spend a couple of weeks uh, before you can really get familiar with it, but it's extremely powerful and makes uh, very nice drawings. Uh, this is particularly worthwhile if you have a, um, <clears throat> a project like a PhD thesis or so where you have a large number of uh, particular diagrams of the same style because you can then write a macro language in order to typeset these diagrams in an algorithmic way. Um, there exist Unix tools, P and M to PS that convert a large number of different file formats into PostScript or PDF. There is Inkscape, which is a newer interactive drawing, uh, drawing program that uses the web vector graphics format SVG in order to uh, storage images, which is a little bit more difficult to edit, but it's still, because it's an XML file, um, but it's still uh, processable with a plain text editor. Um, and then there are tools like uh, MATLAB or R or GNU plot or uh, Python has a clone of the MATLAB plot command in its matplotlib uh, package. And all of these are quite commonly used in order to produce figures that you then can include in LaTeX documents.